Um, I may be your most experienced new entrepreneur. Um, I had a lot of experience opening new things and trying new things. Uh, we started back in 1980 with Greg's Galley, which was a restaurant that I opened with my brother. Um, and then the Lighthouse Restaurant, uh, I had worked there since uh, 1982 and then bought the business in 1991 uh, until 2008. Uh, that was 26 years, it was a great experience, big place at the beach, it was very exciting. Uh, but things got a little tougher, uh, the economy changed and scaled back and uh, we just couldn't, couldn't afford to stay there with the uh, increasing in the uh, rents and whatnot. Uh, we had also uh, started here at Dell Tech uh, in 2005, uh, running their food service and cafeteria here at the Owens campus. Uh, we also had been doing uh, Sussex Tech at the Adult Ed, which was a nighttime, kind of a one-person sort of uh, operation, just to help them with their uh, program for the folks that were trying to get their GEDs and whatnot. Um, Sussex County Airport, uh, Sussex County Council asked us to take over at the airport in 2005 and we fulfilled that contract and found that that was a, less than optimum uh, for profitability so when our contract expired we, we did not renew. Um, then Dell Tech uh, put out a bid so we had to renew our bid here and we also bid on the Denver campus which we were fortunate enough to uh, win that bid and that was just this year. Uh, also, Sussex Tech asked us to take over all of their concessions, uh, actually simultaneously as we were trying to start up in Dover. And then Polytech um, in Kent County has also asked us to take over their catering, and that's just been uh, recently as uh, December. So starting three new programs at once was a mind-blowing experience, and I'm sure that you, know, you all understand the problems of getting up, getting going, getting the staffing, uh, get things to run smooth. Uh, running a little thin on my on myself, trying to you know spread myself around to the, the newer ones as much as possible to make sure everybody understands what we're trying to do, how we're trying to do it. Uh, my second part would be is is that when opportunity knocks for you, there are opportunities that come up. You must answer the door. Sometimes when it's not convenient, um, and for me, there's a those uh, things uh, were, were not particularly convenient at that time, but I felt like I needed to push through that because it was an opportunity that may not come up again in, in any time uh, soon. Uh, also, I've found that multiple streams of income are very important in whatever business you're in to try to not depend on just one thing uh, because things change and sometimes they can change quickly and you may be used to having something from one source that isn't available for whatever reason. And if you have other things coming along, it, it makes it easy to get through the tougher times. Um, slow, and slow and consistent uh, is really, even though that I expanded quickly in the last uh, you know, three or four months, um, consistency is a good benchmark to run your, your businesses. People look for the same experience when they come back to you over and over again. And you need to mix it up, you need to have new offerings, um, but you need to keep those new offerings and offer the consistent product that you produced before along with your new offerings. It's, uh, it's very important. Um, be observant. Look for those new opportunities. Uh, sometimes it's in the one ads under announcements. And Sometimes it's referrals from another person. Sometimes it's just something you hear through the grapevine. But keep your ears open because opportunities arise and you have to pursue them if you want to get them. You have to think about what your goal is. Uh, for me, uh, <clears throat> it's not really about the money. Um, I have a passion for what I do. And my passion is service, servitude to my, to my customers. That's really what we're about. We want to make our customers happy. That's our number one priority. Sometimes that doesn't work out real great with the financing, okay? Because that's where we put our emphasis. Um, some people, um, you know, you need to decide where you are in that spectrum of things. And you have your employees, you need to keep your employees happy. Happy employees make better experience for your customers. And you also need to support your vendors because your vendors really pay an important part in your business. And if you have a good business relationship with them, 
they can uh, help you maybe when things aren't great for you. I'd like to ask everybody's uh, help here today, and we're trying to expand somewhere down the line. I'm very interested in retailing some of our products uh, on the market, something that I'm not familiar with at all. Um, we have uh, done our, uh, our Chesapeake crab soup, and we have it <coughs> done it in, in a uh, mason jar, um, and we've you know, send it to people. We've kept it for several months and make sure we have the process down. Um, but it's definitely on the back burner because so many new things have come recently. But it's still something that I want to keep, you know, going. Um, I want another revenue stream. Um, advice for you, priorities. What are your priorities? Plan for your priorities. Develop your multiple streams of income. You know, keep searching them out. And remember your employees, their lives are in your hands. You may not think about that, especially if you have a small group, but they have personal problems, personal things that come up, and they're looking for you in every facet of their life for guidance, for consistency, for help. And what do you get in turn for that is loyalty and a willing to do more than just punch the clock in and out and go home. So again, for me, it's servitude. I serve my employees as well as my customers to the best of my ability. And I find that to be very helpful for me in the long run. Thank you, Paul. We're gonna take an opportunity to ask questions from our audience today. If you'll stay right there, we'll get some response from you. Any questions in the audience? I do not have an on-site restaurant. Um, it's a uh, food service here at Deltec in Georgetown, uh, Deltec in Dover, and then catering at the Cheer Center here in Georgetown, uh, Polytech up in Kent County, and any off-premise thing as well. Do you, you do, okay, that's what I'm asking you often. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Uh, you speak of consistent. We try to work with um, people that have worked in, with me directly for long periods of time so that we know we're on the same page with consistency. I mean, we have recipes and, you know, things like that to keep the, you know, the, the contents and whatnot. But it's really when we open something new, I try to take somebody that's been with me, that's ready to fly, that wants to, wants to be a leader and put them in that position so that they know our spirit of serv servitude and consistency, how important that is. And that's, that's really the key is, is um, wanting them to be consistent. Um, the, the attitude to me is everything. Paul, well, we know that food service, the food service industry is very challenging. I mean, we could go to any number of food service areas here in Sussex County in Georgia. What's your competitive advantage? Um, our, our competitive advantage is, I, I think, is, is we want to make our customers happy. I mean, we are, we'll do almost anything to make sure that they get what they want, especially for you know your weddings and your you know business events. Um, budgeting is also a big part of that, and that we can work with pretty much everybody. It's on some level. We realize everybody can't afford. $10,000 for the food for a wedding. So, you know, we have options. We have, you know, we work with all types of things in order to make that happen. We may not make as much on, you know, an event that we would like to, but we realize that if, you know, somebody who's uh, working, you know, it's just a regular nine to five job and doesn't really, you know, can only afford so much, they give me a budget, I'm working with them. You know, I don't want to tell them, no, I can't. So we're trying to do everything that we can in order to make that happen. Staffing for the restaurant business is a challenge. What is your um, secret to hiring the right type of people? Where do you go? What is your method? 
when it, we interview, you know, there's there's the, the initial meeting um, for the presentation of how they bring themselves to you um, is important. You know, how they fill out their application is important. Are the details correct? Um, and then when you're speaking to them, I ask them certain scenarios of, hey, have you ever had this happen to you? And generally, people that have been in the business sort of want to tell you the story when they meet you. And the story can be very, very revealing. Are they somebody who wants to tell me a story about how they did somebody over? Or they want to tell me a story about how they helped somebody? And I, you know, I have to say I've been very blessed. I've been in the business a long time. I, people come to me. And not only do they come to me, people that used to work to me come back to me. And sometimes they come back three and four and five times. And as long as, you know, we left on good terms and, you know, they were a good performer, my, my door is open if I can possibly do that. Um, because I treat my employees very well, I, I never have really had problem attracting, you know, folks to fill the slots that we have. Um, unfortunately, Bell Tech has been a, a big help in trying to uh, do larger events. You know, sometimes we need 20 or 30 servers for a particularly large event. And uh, you know, there's a student body here and, and just associations. I mean, teachers, people that need, you know, just a couple little part-time jobs. And you might only see them two times a year, but they're eager to be there for you. somebody that we met at that event, which who would have thought that ever would have happened. 